America Finding Its Way Here on Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. And joining us, Tim Apicella, uh, Stephanie Dalton, Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch, for our regular discussion oh, uh, about America finding its way. And today we're going to we're going to focus on Congress. We're going to ask whether Congress is failing in its duty. You know, I mean, the democracy requires the checks and balances in the Constitution, and all three branches have to be functional because they check and balance each other. So let's talk about um, you know, what is going on in Congress vis-a-vis -vis its own protection. It failed in the run-up to January 6th. We know that there was intelligence and nobody acted on it. And then we had a riot, a destructive, murderous riot, uh, which has never really been resolved. And you can say that the Department of Justice is, is prosecuting, but we have yet to see anyone really get prosecuted. It's just a question of, um, making it public or what? And then more, more recently in hearings on this, and uh, Amy Klobuchar was involved, we, we saw that. It popped out from General Walker, um, the National Guard general in Washington, uh, that uh, those guys are ready to go to the Capitol hours um, after, before they got the permission to go to the Capitol. They'd been told not to go to the Capitol um, without permission, the day before, by the Joint Chiefs. I find that very interesting. The Joint Chiefs knew enough to warn them uh, not to go to the Capitol the day before. So they're waiting for permission on, on uh, January 6th. And they don't get permission for two, three hours. They're ready to go. They're in the buses, ready to get right down there and, and defend the Capitol, but no permission. And, and, and just one more thing to add is that right now, uh, the Capitol, I guess it's the police force and maybe the, the committee that's involved, the, the dysfunctional committee, if you read about that, um, has asked to extend the time of the National Guard in Washington, D.C., to protect the Capitol, especially today, because today there's supposed to be a counter inauguration. And the, the Joint Chiefs has not responded to that either. They got a problem with communication, command control, or is it much worse with um, Mike Flynn's brother there? So Tim, what is going on? Um, you know, if we can't protect the Capitol, what good is it? I think that's a very good question, Jay. And they are protecting the Capitol. Um, they just didn't protect the Capitol on January the 6th, which is now almost 60 days from, from where, where that was. I just think it's gonna take more time for investigations to take place. I think we're gonna know more. I think we're going to find out there was a breadcrumb trail from, um, you know, the desire for General, uh, what's his name, uh, from uh, Washington, D.C., National Guard? Clark. Uh, Clark. War, uh, Wagner, Walker. Warner, Clark, something. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you're going to see a breadcrumb trail from the instructions for him not to move. At, I think he wanted to move around 1.58 p.m. He didn't get there until 5 p.m. So there was a three-hour and nine-minute difference, according to his testimony. And I think you're going to find it as time goes on, you're going to find names and, and communications somewhere in the Pentagon that will support uh, the theory that there were, you know, there were forces at hand to, to try to prevent uh, the National Guard from backing up the Washington, D.C. police. And I can't wait for that to happen because it'll be a part of history. And from that, there's a basis to uh, possibly look at criminal charges for those involved. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, one, one thing of interest is um, their excuse, uh, the Joint Chiefs' excuse, including that committee in which um, Mike Flynn's brother, the general, was on that committee. They said they didn't like the optics of having optics, quote, optics, uh, having the National Guard come to the Capitol. Uh, and this was hours after the Capitol was being ransacked, by the way. Um, do you accept that? You, is that logical for you, Tim? Uh, absolutely not. Um, that sounds like one of the senators in Congress coming up with reasons why they won't support a bill. I mean, just they just pull it out of the thin air and that's their explanation. It's, it's ridiculous. The Capitol was under attack and um, they knew that they had enough information from the FBI. They had, they had their intelligence. They knew this was going to take place. Um, I go to my comment yesterday and why Donald Trump didn't intercede for hours uh, with to support the Washington DC police. Why didn't he, why didn't he intercede? Well, he didn't want them 
he didn't want them blunting the invasion force. He no, wanted he was, them to get in there. He was at home with his television set, uh, reveling in, in the festivities. Of course he was. Yeah. It, but, you yeah. know, from a logic point of view, just looking at this logically, um, so there's a two or three hour delay, which could have saved the Capitol. Honestly, it could have. And it could have saved uh, the Capitol Police, too. And there's a delay. And, and, you know, this is the 21st century. They all knew what was going on. All they had to do was turn on a television or even their cell phone, and they would have known exactly what was going on out there. Uh, and they don't do anything. They do not respond, you know, which is actually more troubling than anything else. And that um, uh, the general in the National Guard, they, they wouldn't answer me. We were begging them and they weren't answering it. It was very interesting, revealing testimony. Um, they wouldn't answer me. So, you know, what, what do you make of that? It means that somebody was telling them not to answer. And they had, they, the, the reason they've advanced so far is a phony reason. So, uh, you know, to me, I draw the line to Trump uh, or, or a Trump supporter in that committee, in the, in the Joint Chiefs. Makes you wonder about the military. Well, remember, Donald Trump appointed new personnel to the Pentagon um, within the last month and a half of his presidency. Uh, they weren't there just <laughs> because they were loyal, loyal followers of Trump. They weren't necessarily qualified for those positions, but that's why he appointed them. So, you know, start there and work your way back. Yeah, I hope we find out. Amy Klobuchar is doing a good job. She, yeah, she's she talking to the public about it. So Stephanie, you know, if if I uh, if I feel hesitant in my own reading skills, and I decide that I cannot read the English language very well, although I've been elected to office to read bills all day, and I tell you, gee whiz, could you please have the clerk read me seven hundred pages before we ever get down to dealing with the in the Senate uh, to dealing with the uh, the COVID relief bill? What do you think about that? That is an amazing question, Jay. I, I think the same way I think about all of what the Congress has been involved in. I, it just making more messes. This is the Trump, since two years old, this is the Trump gig. Make as much a mess of anything that you can. Create chaos, do uh, damage as much as you can. So that's what they're trying to do. They tried to do that on January the 6th because if we go one step forward, what about if they had over said, you know, that Arizona and Georgia and their their votes were not accepted, then what? Okay, then we would have another mess, which is the happiness for Trump. There he is with this big pile of crazy. And then we go to the Supreme Court and, and it just goes on. So now same thing, all of these people that, as you say, are, are still linked in with him are continuing his two year old gig that he has mastered over 73 years. So I, I just think it's more of the same and they're mimicking him and it's to their, it's to their eternal disparagement, these people that are doing that. What about, the, what about the rule that permits any senator to stand up and request a reading of the bill here in the year 2021? How, how do you feel about that? Should that be a rule of the, of the best, highest deliberative body in the land? Or is that a phony baloney rule? It's clear as, as, it's clear as it can be that it's uh, completely useless and just to interrupt. And I, I guess I'd rather hear green eggs and Hamptons and shorter. But I think that, yeah, it is a phony baloney. So why do, why do they have it? What, whatever would have been the original purpose of having that in there, as you and said. And why don't they, why don't they repeal it right now today? Yeah, I know. So I, you know, I just want to point out too that of, uh, this is going to go on. One of the reasons I think, as we all know, we've heard so much about it, including from Mary Trump. But tr as you think about the Congress and its constitutional and their wins in the election, Trump is the only person that lost of all of these people. Uh, I may be wrong, I haven't gone over every single, I'm, I'm sure there were a couple that didn't make it. But he is, this is the final blow that I know he can't absorb this, but he is the only one that lost. And all the rest that they made gains in the house, they barely, 
you know, they could have had the Senate, thank God it turned out as it did. But I just, I just want to point that on, out because he's up against some really horrible reality that he can't go to. He'll never go to that. Well, so, you know, it's, it's like the pathological kid, you know, he's, he's unhappy about something, so he burns the house down. That's the it's, path, it's pathology. Uh, Cynthia, let, let's go to you. Let's talk about the filibuster rule. This also binds the Senate and ultimately binds legislation coming out of Congress. Um, and it's, it's old, it's been around for a long time. Do you see it as, as a positive in any way? Uh, is there any redeeming feature about it? Um, and what should happen with the, with the filibuster rule? There, well, I think there may be a redeeming feature to it as in it's really set in place to ensure bipartisan workings in Congress. Unfortunately, we are so far away from that that all it does right now is tie the hands of, of whoever it is that's not in. So it's like you can't get anything done and, and it will completely um, stop everything that Biden tries to do in its tracks right now. So I don't know why they haven't gotten rid of it yet. I'm still, I don't understand that one. I understand they couldn't get rid of it for the impeachment has to be two thirds of the Senate, all that stuff, two Senate, two, two thirds of the Senate present. But, um, but this one, I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense to me that we are still even talking about it. Why hasn't um, Chuck Schumer got rid of it already? Why is it even still there? You know that if, um, if this were, if the other things were, you know, switched on the other side, the Republicans would get rid of it in an heartbeat. They would change everything. They would move heaven and earth to get their way. So I believe that they have shown their true colors fully well, and we cannot count on them. Well, we got a handful of them that were bold enough to come out in the impeachment, but even they are starting to kind of walk back their talk about the impeachment even. So I don't trust Republicans to come around. And no. I think that Biden is wrong to drag his feet on getting rid of that filibuster. He's got two years that he can get a lot done, but not if he keeps going, well, let's see if they'll be nice. They're not gonna be nice. We already know who they are. They have shown their true colors. And I think it's time to stop wasting time and get busy getting stuff done for this country without being in charge, the Republican. So Winston, it's really important that Biden, after a non-transition transition, should get going here. Um, and yet, in his main his main initiative uh, got through the House okay, uh, with, with resistance from the Republicans, but now it's in the Senate. And uh, thank goodness that Schumer is the you know, leader of the Senate, but, but my goodness, there's so many ways the Republicans can delay that. And they are delaying it in every way possible. Um, even though it, it, what they're doing hurts, visibly hurts their own constituents. It's quite remarkable. But at the, the end of the day, um, it seems like every legislative initiative, as opposed to proclamations you know, that a president can issue, which is always reversible, um, it seems to me that Biden is not going to be able to get through his initiatives, including the COVID, including the, the voting rights bill, uh, including, oh, you name it, gun control, uh, and on and on and on immigration, all his initial infrastructure, he's not going to be able to get it through. Why? I, I like your opinion on this, because the Republicans don't want him to succeed at anything. They're all winding up to, you know, criticize him as Trump is already doing um, and beat him in the 2022-2024 election. So this is a problem. Do you agree it's a problem? Uh, do you, do you, I like your, your thoughts about how broad and serious a problem it is. And, um, and what we can do about it. Well, uh, it is a problem, but you know, I, I think we can expect normal partisan behavior, but as Cynthia was saying, we're beyond normal partisan times. This is tribalistic. These folks should be Americans first and say, what is what do we need for the country? Like you said, the constituents there, they're not serving their constituents, but their constituents are not connecting the pieces of the puzzle. I thought it was particularly sad that um, uh, Mitch McConnell came out and said there is zero question that Donald mm -hmm.
Trump was culpable for uh, the January uh, uh, was the sixth is that our, our date uh, um, insurrection zero doubt and then what just about a week ago two weeks ago he was saying but I'll support him for the next presidential run if he wins that was, was last that Sunday was beyond sad it was it was um, I, devastating for America you know when you when you have a man who has said this man is actively trying to overthrow our system of government and indeed his own life was at risk you know if they were going after mike pence do, would they not go after mitch mcconnell who had very well been on donald trump's target list for years there was frontline has come out with something a couple a uh, few weeks ago i suggest people check it out um it was a synopsis of of the last four years it was a just devastating on how the takeover of our government happened slowly drip by drip and it they condense like each month into about 10 seconds but for the uh, astute or even casual observer you can see the pattern over time um look you know jay that this idea about getting rid of the filibuster look cynthia says this it was there for a reason to have bipartisan support on on um on bills and to make sure that people were on the same foot that's assuming that people that they're not going into this weird cultish behavior um slavishly devoted to one man with no ideals or principles if there was some something there if there was something in the something sandwich that would make a difference if they were fighting for some principles but they're not and it's just craven political power that doesn't work and so uh, however, I remember when Harry Reid got rid of something in the Senate, and I thought, oh, the Democrats will rue the day when that comes back. But at this point, when we're faced with the existential threat of our nation existing, um, it may be time to get rid of the filibuster so that they can act meaningful um, voter reform, meaningful reform across the channels. Because otherwise, you're looking at things, there have been 250 well, bills uh, put in to local state houses to restrict voting when you have such gerrymandering it's the the republicans realize that they are very that they will they could very easily get back and take power again i mean they're they're one person away basically um if if, if right now and so you know as much as i would say it keep that safeguard in place it's part of the rails there Right now, the rails aren't the, the, the system. But what I don't understand, and what a lot of Americans don't understand, is why, after the Democrats made such a big thing about um, the two senators in Georgia, and why you know we, you got email every day asking for money, and and why you know we we worked so hard uh, in order to achieve uh, majorities in both houses of Congress, why the Democrats are having such a problem in moving anything ahead in Congress. It, you know, I mean, this latches on to the whole thing about whether Congress and for that matter, the system in Congress and for that matter, especially the system in, in the Senate is dysfunctional. Why can't a party that has had majorities that does have majorities in both houses do anything? Uh, the, it's it's the cultist devotion to one man and the not the devotion, it's fear of him. And so they're afraid. And, and instead of doing their jobs, they're worried about not having a job. And, and, and you know, these folks can go out and get jobs in the corporate world very easily. They've been senators. But, but, but they have a majority in both houses. Yes. Why can't they do anything? Have the extra 10 people who will vote on principle about something. And if you just had the Republicans decide on principle what was good and right for their constituents, you'd easily have... Uh, these numbers crossing over they're not going to like everything in the bill no one ever does but it's about compromise it's about it's about relief to the states and the cities and tens of millions of people facing uh hunger in this nation and being evicted in uh, there's so many there's so many right initiatives it's so just like it's not only the COVID bill but it's, you mentioned it's a about, lot of other uh, legislation you did mention about joe biden and and, and ruling um by executive order you know what? That's the way it's got to be done. He has an enormous amount of power. We've been seeing this, the uh, office of the executive uh, over the last couple decades become much more so over time. I don't think it's a really sure, but you know, but, but Winston, but that goes for the proposition to that he has to do that. And he the reason to he it. has to do that is because Congress is yes. dysfunctional. 
so, so we he moved has to, to do it now and that's uh, and even if it's temporary if if he needs to do that and whatever he can do he needs to do because he's been empowered with that just like donald trump was well, it's so, too bad though because it, it tells you that checks and balances and our um, you know our, our system of government with three branches isn't working so tim you know the, what, you know what's really important in Congress is the members. You know whether they're whether they're Democrat or Republican, they're they're elected by the people, and you know that's got to count for something. But we have such problems now because the Republicans have taken it upon themselves to do gerrymandering, voter suppression, the most hideous things possible in the face of a democracy that relies on the popular vote. It relies on the popular vote. Um, for all these, um, you know, congressmen, and what and what is happening now, what what began to happen around the same time as March sixth, um, is we've had Republicans in various states push through bills in the state capitals, suppressing votes, uh, votes that affect the election of people who go to Congress, <laughs> and so they're 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 pulling the wings out of Congress in the states, and um, you know, a couple of days ago, this, the Supreme Court. Um, and, uh, you know, to her credit, the, our newest justice there voted in favor of voting rights. Um, but, you know, how confident are you that the federal court system, which is populated largely by Trump appointees, and he appointed hundreds of them during his time, uh, and the Supreme Court, which has, a, you know, three judges he appointed, uh, that, that they, will, they will continue to uphold, you know, the right to vote? How confident are you? Uh, as confident as I didn't know how it was going to go with the uh, court cases of uh, election rigging, you know, that Donald Trump and his, his supporters brought to the Supreme Court and to the federal courts and to the federal judge's credit and to the Supreme Court's credit, they came down on the side of the democracy. The fact that there wasn't evidence that you can't just yell fraud and not have an evidence for fraud. And so when you look at these laws that are passing, I mean, it's pretty obvious that they're steeped to do one thing and one thing only, and that's to discourage people from coming out to vote. I forget what state it was, but you had someone testify um, in a court hearing that if he allowed uh, mail-in ballots, that, that would be advantageous for the Democrats, and there's no way Republicans would win. Uh, you don't that say that. The, that was in that Supreme Court argument a couple of days yeah, ago. I don't think you say that in front of a judge. <laughs> You know, but he did. And so yeah. I think at the, some point you, you, you passed the giggle test on this and you rule that, which is obvious. And so I do have confidence that the federal judges or the Supreme Court will come down on something that looks overtly um, a process to disenfranchise voters. A lot of litigation is going to happen. A lot of litigation. You know, these, these, these bills are going to go into 50 states. Uh, some of them will get passed. Um, they, they'll, they'll have to be countervailing political interests that challenge those bills and have the funds and political will to take them up to the Supreme Court. And then, of well, course, they'll be met with resistance, those suits. And so it, we'll have a battle, a whole national battle over we voting. Well, the national bill needs to be put out. You know, I, mean, I think the House just passed it uh, this morning. And I know it's going to have a, a rough and tumble time in the Senate, but there needs to be some guidelines on a national level that will discourage the states from coming up with these these ridiculous little you know laws that they're trying to do to again to to discourage voters. Yeah, they and could do it. They could do it. The, the Congress could do it. Yes. So let me ask the second half of my question to you: How confident are you that the Congress will do it? Well, it takes one vote, and that's you know Joe Manchin needs to probably get in line. And so you have a 50-50, and then Kamala Harris, Vice President Harris, will come in and break the tie. So yes, I am confident it could happen. Uh, it depends on if anyone defects from the Democrat side. Yeah, it's scary. It's scary. Because Congress will, will be all the less functional uh, if these bills start taking a toll in the 2022 and, and executive, or executive orders won't win the day on this. No, no. They can't reach that far. Right. Stephanie, you know, we've been finding out that what was going on in the Department of Justice uh, in the last days of the Trump administration was really unholy. And that cases were being buried, cases uh, against Trump and his friends were being buried um, by lawyers uh, 
who swore to uphold the Constitution in the Department of Justice, the you know the the senior law enforcement organization in the country, um, and we you know we don't even know all of the incidents where this took place in the Department of Justice. It may take some time for us to find out. I think one of the most interesting ones is the story of Elaine Chow, who was the Secretary of Transportation and the wife of, uh, of our friend um, Mitch McConnell, um, and who is the daughter of a shipping magnate in China, building ships in China, and the, and the sister of another Chow who runs a, a huge uh, shipping organization. Um, and, the, and that somehow got buried. It's now coming up again. The question is, uh, can we clean this up? Uh, what will it take to clean this up? How do you clean it up? And Merritt Garland has not yet been confirmed. Yeah. Um, we're still waiting on pins and needles over that. I'm astounded that, that Elaine Chow has been under the radar for all this time. It popped up a couple, two years ago about her ill doings. And finally, one senator from, uh, was he from Oregon? Uh, the senator from Oregon um, ins insisted on an IG investigation of Elaine Chow because that rich father, I mean, this is a crazy rich Asian movie kind of rich. And uh, she was doing all kinds of things uh, for him out of her office. And there were all kinds of missteps. He finally got IG to take it on and they just closed the case the other day, today or yesterday, that they didn't see anything that was at the level of criminal. So she kept all of that, all of that sidestepping and horsing around for him, for the dad and the family and trips to China and Mitch going along too. got all that under the radar. Don't, don't forget, Mitch got a $25 million birth, birthday gift this past year. And so she's been, she sneaked out of uh, her role early. I think one of the reasons she went out early is because she knew this IG investigation was going on, but the Senator is very disappointed that it came, that they've closed it and didn't find anything, but they did the investigation. So um, I'm, I'm grateful for that, but that has been very weird that they have been able to act that out and nobody paid any attention to it at all. My other concern relating to the most uh, wonderful topic that you brought up, you and Tim talking about these judges. Yes, all during those cases Tim mentioned where he was satisfied that they were doing their duty according to the principles of law and right and wrong and the other guiding um, principles. I want, I challenge the Washington Post and New York Times to start tracking these people, these judges. Yes, they got us through, oh, it was all a fraud. They did all that right. But they're, like you said, hundreds of them out there, most very inexperienced and incompetent because they're babies and they're going to be there forever. So mm -hmm. who's checking, just like the list of lies? Can we check on who these judges are and how they're ruling? And so far, it looks like the records is clean. But what's going to happen going forward? Well, you're right. We have to look at them. We have to watch them. We have to report on them. And if they if they do things that are shameful, we should call them out on it. We should shame them. There's no, there's no reason why we can't shame them. And even for incompetence, Jay, because lots of these people got pushed through. They had nothing but, I guess, a 4.0 or, so, or they were OK with the bar, um, the ABA, and the other people that, and those other associates. Um. There are some don't feel that the bar did much of a job on those judges. Let me, let me move to Cynthia. One of the things we should discuss is the other bills. This is an extension of what I asked you before. There are so many initiatives. There are so many problems. There are so many things that have to be cleaned up and rolled back that happened in the Trump administration. Yes, it was chaos for four years and things were, things were being destroyed. The government was being destroyed in the four years. So here we are in the House, which has some clarity under Nancy Pelosi, uh, and in the Senate, which doesn't seem to have as much clarity. Um, and they move so slowly, and they get involved in these rules we talked about. Um, and, no, and the Republicans have no interest in moving ahead anything that Biden comes up with, and they have no agenda or platform themselves. Their only platform is to stop him. That's their platform. And win next time, you know, achieving power. 
<clears throat> so the question is, can they do anything on all these other initiatives? I'm naming only a few, uh, immigration, infrastructure, social security, um, gee whiz, what else I know, I'm, uh, healthcare in general. Uh, there's so, so many things that we need to attend to. Why? Because we're in the 21st century. Things move fast. Technology is another one. <clears throat> we haven't addressed it. And it seems to me while they you know, fritter away the days, day after day, on dealing with what Trump did, they're not, they don't have time left. And, and the process is so cumbersome, they'll never get through these issues. How confident are you that this Congress will be able to do anything in the next two years? I wish I could say I was really confident, but unfortunately, I'm not. Um, I was extremely upset with Nancy Pelosi for putting into the COVID bill some rail structure for San Francisco. I, that made me mad because I'm thinking, wait a minute. Now, here we are talking about these, you know, not these ne'er-do-well Republicans that don't have any, you know, uh, integrity. Yet, where's the integrity in trying to put in a COVID bill some sort of rail project? So that, that alone right there made me go, that's a Democrat shooting themselves in the foot. And I see that over and over. And that's why I don't have a lot of confidence. And, yes. and I see them watch the Republicans. Now, Mitch McConnell got rid of that um, filibuster in five seconds flat. Didn't even take him two seconds. Everything that they were able to get away with doing was because of that. Now, why are we waiting? And I also see the Republicans playing the long game, right? Their state houses are full of Republicans now, because they've been playing the long game. They've been looking at this from the, from scratch out. And I feel like the Democrats are looking at it from up here back. And so it, it doesn't go forward as much as I would like it to. I would like to see Democrats having absolutely pristine integrity because after what the Republicans have done, the only way to call them out for it is to have that kind of integrity. And Nancy Pelosi, in my mind, just threw that out the window when she wanted her rail project. So I, that kind of stuff is what makes me go, I can we really count on these guys to do the right thing? All of them. So we know the Republicans probably won't. Can we count on the Democrats to do the right thing? So Manchin's getting a lot of heat for complaining about that part of the bill. I'm sorry. I think he was right to complain about it. I don't think it should have been in there. This is for COVID relief, not rail projects. And that's basically what he said. So I, I agree that we all, they need to all be on the same page. All the Democrats need to stay together and be in line together. But I think if one of them's not acting right, they need to be called out. So mm -hmm. I want to see the Democrats. Okay, well, I do, now there are those who disagree. And I wonder how uh, Winston feels about this, you know? Wouldn't it be better, Winston, if the Democrats could get together on things? The Republicans are together pretty much on things. The Democrats are not. They shoot themselves in the foot, and now they're they're involved in the in the uh, uh, the attacks on Cuomo and um, on um, the California governor. Um, and you know, it's 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 fragmented. The Democrats are fragmented. Now you can say, well, that's the way of democracy. That's what uh, um, that's what uh, you know. Um, what was his name? That, no, that's 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 the nature of democracy that you have all this discussion and argument and whatnot. Um, but we're, we're in crisis. Our government is in crisis. The future of our country is in crisis. Wouldn't it be better if, if the Democrats simply, you know, bury these little issues and got along to you know, participate in what amounts to be a civil political war, which is being waged right now? Wouldn't it be better if they got together? Well, it's it's nice when you have one uber commander who can tell his troops what to do and how to do it. But we've seen that that doesn't really work out well in the end. And we've got a few nation state examples of that. And um, yeah, so no. Um, and I agree with Cynthia, like the Democrats have to realize, OK, if you're they're not going to win back the hearts and minds of true believers on the other side but there's those people that are like 
I don't like the, the shenanigans that are going on on either side. And the problem is, is that when they turn on Fox News or it's on already because someone else turned it on in their house or one America, then they hear about these things uh, and they hear about the pork that goes in. And of course, there's going to be pork going in because that's the way the system's been built for decades. It's just getting more extreme. It was similar to Joe Biden funding, um, providing funding for uh, abortions internationally. This is something that's going to enrage, inflame, make the, the, the right hysterical and, and say, why did he do that when, you know, Planned Parenthood or whoever else could step in and do that role when they know that that's something that's absolutely like a trigger. Um, gun control. Do they need to go after the guns right now? Um, I would say the guns are here to stay. There's, I don't know, a billion guns or something, half a billion guns in this country. That's not going anywhere. So they can stay away from the super red meat of the of the opposition and still get a whole bunch done by um, by cleaning up their act internally, not marching to the beat of one drum, but a drum of sanity and um, I don't want to say moderation, but one of, of thoughtfulness that's not just going to... Okay, all right. Why, why, don't we let, why don't we let you make a last comment of one minute, okay? Winston? Oh, okay. You know what? For all we come on, this is our democracy. We get to complain about it. We get to criticize it. We get to condemn it. And that is a wonderful, amazing thing. And so God bless America if you believe in God or Buddha or, or nobody if you're an atheist. But you know what? We got a lot going on right in this country. But it's up to us to step up and to say, I don't like it. I don't see it. I want to change something better. And to work with others to get the best country that we have. Because otherwise, we're going to get the country that we that don't, we had really want. four years <laughs> so i i think that we're i'm hopeful we have a wonderful president who's just said every single american is going to be able to get a COVID shot by the end of may this is an amazing thing that he's look at his list of accomplishments and let's just kind of get work behind together. him work let's together get, get behind, behind him. him get How behind that country. get behind the best that america can be and stop with the petty bs um, yes there you the go board. All right, Cynthia, your minute. Okay, I won't take a whole minute. I'm going to read a quote uh, by George Orwell, which I think is, is very provocative. It's the way I'm going to describe this quote. The most effective way to destroy people is to deny and obliterate their own understanding of their history. That's it. And yeah. he who ignores his history or her history is doomed to repeat it. And there are some awful scenarios that we could repeat. Stephanie, what's your minute? Yeah, Joe Manchin, will you back off? What, what is going on with this Joe Manchin? He is the head of Appalachia, the largest white poverty <laughs> community in the nation. Will he get on with serious business and quit interrupting Biden? And then for Biden, you horsed around with Republicans. And I hope that you feel like you've checked the box, that you touched the stove, and you found out it's still hot. So would you stop the horsing around now, please? And let's go, as many, many of this group has suggested. Thank okay, you. Tim, you know, we have not heard of a counter inauguration today. And I take that as a good sign. Yes, I do too. <laughs> Although but, we are going to be facing a tsunami here in Hawaii in a bit. So we'll see how, how that, that goes. They say it's not a problem. I know. But, but the question, the question I put to you is, is um, you know, here we are, we have this kind of civil war going on, call it a political civil war. Um, and we have, we have Trump trying to, trying to recover, trying to re reemerge, uh, re re retake his presidency. Um, and, you know, all of us, we talked about, um, a month or two ago, we talked about the possibility that time would go by and the same sort of, you know, media cycle phenomenon that he has been using over his four years will happen to him. Other things like, for example, Biden's success in the vaccine, that, that, that is certainly worth thinking about and the media is playing that up. And the negative things like Cuomo, that, that, that distracts from Trump's efforts to retake the presidency. So is that happening, do you think? Is the, is the mere passage of time and the news cycle 
you know, taking the power away from him, do you think? I think you're going to expect this no matter what administration. There's always something to distract from the efforts in which you're trying to put forth. Um, to sound corny here, President Biden will get his bills passed. He just needs to bide his time. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a play on words? Yes. Yes, and that's corny, I know, but that's the best I can give you right now. So. <laughs> okay, what I'm a sorry. great discussion as usual. Tim Apicello, thank you so much, Stephanie Dalton, uh, Cynthia Sinclair, Winston Welch, first class discussion. Really appreciate all these ideas and arguments and positions. Gee whiz, we do, we do our job, we do investigation. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Aloha. <laughs>